was a Saturday. Mum was in the kitchen, sorting out her bits and bobs bag. Bits! <laughs> beast! <laughs> I was going into the garden with Grandpa and Jemima to play the bird, beast and bug spotting game. Bug! <laughs> <laughs> it's hot out there, I need my hat. Good grief! Bird, beast or bug, Grandpa? Hard to tell. Fish, fish, boo, hoo, bother, dash, dollop. Couldn't find my hat, so Mums will have to do. Oh, hello, can we help you? Oh, sorry, seem to have accidentally wandered in, following a bird. Thought it went in that tree. I'm Lenora. Lenora the Explorer. I expect you've heard of me. Rather famous, actually. Lenora the Explorer? You take those fantastic pictures of birds, beasts and bugs. That's right. If I see them, I snap them. <laughs> oh, yes. This was the day when we all got to meet... Lenora the Explorer. Ah. Now, I've come in search of an extremely rare creature. The blue, big-beaked bonglebird. Mostly blue, of course. Big beak, red tail feathers and yellow wings. Seen it, anyone? No. No, yes, I have. Oh, doesn't surprise me. Only seen it once myself. So shocked I didn't manage to get a decent photo of the little flutter putter. Well, maybe we've heard the blue big beaked bongle bird. What does it sound like? <coughs> like that. In <sighs> fact, some call it the blue big beaked shrill shrieked bongle bird. This is so exciting. Lenora the Explorer in Sunny Sands, in our garden. Why don't you stay with us while you're exploring, Lenora? Yes, yes. You'll be ever so welcome. <gasps> So before we knew it, this had happened. Lenora had put her tent up in our garden. Now, listen here. This is a tough mission. Quite frankly, I could do with some help. So I propose to lead you all on an expedition to find the blue, big beaked, grilled streaked bongle bird. Oh, oh, I would be honoured to be in an expedition led by Lenora the Explorer. Oh! <laughs> I didn't mean you, Grandpa. You can't run, you can't climb, you can't jump. You just hold the whole expedition up. Sorry, old chum, but you're far too old and slow to be an explorer. Is that right? Well, in that case, I'd better just go and have a little lie down. I knew what Grandpa was thinking. Fact one. The bonglebird likes to perch on very high places. Where's the highest place in Sunny Sounds? The lighthouse. Mr. Bent is away, but he left us the key. Smart girl. Come on, everyone, follow me to the lighthouse. Too old? Too slow? I don't think so. I'm going to join the expedition and I'll find the blue, big beaked, shrill shriek bongle bird before Lenora the Explorer does. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa. Catch me if you can. You know what happens when Grandpa shrinks. He can run faster than any of us. Grandpa! He can climb up things, he can jump off things, but when he wants to go to the lighthouse, Grandpa has to fly. And that means using his magic to ride on Gordon, my toy seagull. Meanwhile, we all went to the lighthouse in Campo, and Dad said... So we're looking for a bird with a big beak that's mostly blue, with red tail feathers and yellow wings. And Jemima said... And it sounds like this. Oh, it's a long way up. Oh, this is the perfect viewing spot. Everyone by the window. Well, everyone looked out of one window, Grandpa flew in through the other one. He circled round and landed on the floor. While I quickly hid Gordon, Grandpa ran and climbed up onto the table. Fish, bish, boo, hoo, bother, dash and dollop. No sign of a little flutter putter from here. Is there anything else we should know about the blue, big beaked, shrill shrieked bongle bird? Did I mention that it flaps its wings like this? Come on, you can all do it. Flap, flap. In fact, some call it the blue, big beaked, shrill shrieked, flippy, flappy bongle bird. Don't forget the shrieking. <coughs> 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 Even Grandpa joined in the flapping. <laughs> Just had an idea. Fact two. The bongle bird loves water. So we need to get closer to the sea. Then we should go to Miss Miley's cafe on the pier. That's virtually in the middle of the sea. What an intelligent young woman you are. 
Follow me, fellow explorers, to Miss Smiley's cafe. Uh, come on, I stayed behind. I just had to talk to Grandpa. We're moving on, Grandpa. So am I. I'll fly to the cafe as fast as I can. With a bit of luck, I'll spot the bungle bird before Lenora, the explorer. OK, just make sure she doesn't spot you first. Yes, hon! So, I ran down the stairs of the lighthouse and Grandpa flew out of the window. When we arrived at Miss Smiley's cafe, Lenora the Explorer couldn't resist a tropical smoothie and a Sunny Sands cupcake. Meanwhile, Grandpa the Explorer was on his way to the pier. Drink up, team. Time to go on the pier. Come on, stand up. Now, remember what we're looking for. Mainly blue, big beak, red tail, yellow wings, sounds like this, <coughs> flaps like this, oh, and wheels its bottom like this. <coughs> Everybody copy. <coughs> While we were all shrieking and flapping and waggling our bottoms, Grandpa ran into the cafe. <coughs> Don't tell me. Some call it the blue, big beaked, shrill shrieked, Flippy flappy wiggly waggly bongo bird. Exactly right. Girls are genius. Onward, explorers, to the end of the pier. <laughs> I stayed behind again to talk to Grandpa. I picked him up and put him on the table. Any luck? No. The bongle bird's definitely not out there. If we don't find it, Lenora the Explorer will be camping in our garden forever. Well, we can't have that, Jason. But don't worry, I've got a brilliant plan. First, I want you to get Lenora back to the house. Then... But there was no time to hear the rest of Grandpa's brilliant plan. Because the explorers were coming back. So Grandpa ran out of the cafe. He leapt onto Gordon and flew home as fast as he could. Still no sign of the little flutter potter. Fact three. The bongle bird likes places that are wild, wet and windy. Then we should go to Misty Moor Mountain. That's about as wild, wet and windy as you can get. Full marks for the girl in pink. Come on, everyone, to Misty Moor Mountain. This wasn't what Grandpa wanted at all. I had to do something. We're going to need warm jumpers, wellies and hats. So how we better go home first? Bish, bish, boo, hoo, bother, dash and dollop. The boy's almost as smart as his sister. Back to the house. So we got back into Campo and drove home. When we got home, I couldn't see Grandpa anywhere. But he was on the kitchen table with Mum's bits and bobs. Jason! Do come along, we'll miss the bongo bird at this rate. If you're looking for your wellies, you won't find them up there. Um, perhaps they're in the kitchen. I still couldn't find Grandpa, but I did find these. Grandpa was running around the kitchen in his pants. This time Grandpa had gone too far. He was dressed as the blue, big, big, shrill, shriek, flippy, flappy, wiggly, waggly bongo bird. Oh, Grandpa, you look... Amazing. So, what's the plan? Well, can't you guess? I'm going into the garden and you're going to tell Lenora that you've spotted the bongle bird in the tree. Meanwhile, everybody was ready to go up Misty Moor Mountain. Lenora, come quick. I've just seen the bongo bird outside, in the tree! <gasps> That's the blue, big, big, shrill, shrink, flippy, flappy, wiggly, waggly bongo bird, all right. And what a fine specimen it is, too. Don't get too close. It might fly away. I must take a photo. While everyone was looking at the photo, Grandpa jumped down from the tree, ran across the grass, and dashed inside. I must take another snap for luck. Where is it? 
Oh no! The little Flutterpot has flown away! In fact, the little Flutterputter was in the kitchen, changing back into his normal clothes. Never mind, mission accomplished! Now I must go in search of my next rare creature, the red-horned roaring rhino! Oh, I don't think we have those in Sunny Sands. Grandpa ran into the sitting room, took off his cap and came back to his oh. normal size. <sighs> you did it, Grandpa! Lenore the Explorer's gone! I couldn't have done it without your help though, Jason. All down to teamwork. <laughs> yes, Grandpa. Teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Grandpa, you're up and about. You missed the bongo bird. Did I? Oh, what a shame. Never mind, Grandpa. Lenora took a photo of it. It's going to be on the cover of the next Beast, Birds and Bugs book. <laughs> Captain, wake up! Just look at that there bird! Really, Master Mate? We are pirates, not bird watchers. Suffering seagulls? What the. Neither a seagull nor suffering, Captain. That there bird is a dodo. Rubbish, fiddlesticks! Everybody knows the dodo is extinct. Died out years ago. Not here it didn't. On this here far flung Hindian Ocean Highland, the dodo is not dead. <laughs> You realize what this means, my hearties? The whole world thinks the dodo is extinct. If we could capture this little lot and take them home, our fortune would be made. Oh, first catch a dodo, Captain. But, Captain, hey, I'll catch one. Watch. But, Captain, quiet, Tom. <laughs> Willie! Sword on its tail. That's what. Come back, Willie. But if you take all these dodos away, they really will die out. Rubbish, Tom. No, no, Willie. I have a far better plan. We will build a trap. A dodo trap. <laughs> to work, me hearties. <laughs> We'll have it there, under that tree. Oi, oi, Captain, sir. And uh, what shall we use to bait the trap? Donuts, Captain. I know dodos adore donuts. Splendid, splendid, me hearties. Bait in position, Master Mate. Oi, oi, Captain. Right. Now we shall all hide in the tree over the trap and watch as the dodos fly into it. But, Captain, they'll stop butting, Tom. You just lie low below and keep quiet. Shh. Now for the dodos. Hey, <laughs> I could do with one of those duck. Quiet, Willie. What's that? Uh, probably the mother dodo, uh, calling its, uh, its, uh, yuck! I was trying to tell you, Captain, dodos can't fly anyway, even if pirates can. Downwards! Oh, don't, 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 don't stand there chattering, Tom. Get us out of here. So Tom set to work to get the pirates out of their own dodo trap. They were all tired and very hungry by the time they'd finished. And as Tom rode them all back that evening to the Black Pig, the Dodos watched and wondered what these curious creatures were. We'll all have supper in bed tonight, Tom, and mind it's a good one. We shall need all our strength if we are to hunt the Dodo uh, uh, more successfully uh, uh, tomorrow. Aye, aye, Captain. So Tom gave them all a huge supper of doughnuts, soaked in rum. All the doughnuts they hadn't used for the dodo trap. And the pirates slept far more deeply than they'd ever meant to. In fact,
The next day, they overslept for hours, while Tom sailed the ship as far away from the island of the Dodos as he possibly could. All hands on deck! All hands on deck! Fall in for the Dodo hunt! Dodos, Captain? What are you talking about? There aren't any Dodos in the middle of the ocean. But, 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 but the island! Oh, those birds! Where are they? You must have been dreaming, Captain. We're nowhere near land. And as the crew were all far too sleepy to remember anything, the captain gave up. The black pig continued her voyage over the wide Indian Ocean. The dodos continued to live peacefully on their island. And for all we know, they may still be there. grown-up sheep living on the fields around Barra Farm. But he is smaller than the rest of the flock and is very easily frightened. Morning, lamb. Uh, hello, Mr. McPherson, sir. Please, call me Uncle Mac, or at the very least, King of the Highlands. Okay, uh, Uncle K King of the Highlands, Mr. McPherson, sir. Why are you so nervous, Lamb? Are you frightened that someone's going to... <laughs> I've never known such a scared as sheep as Aggie the Lamb. How could a member of my flock be such a coward? Auntie Swift! What's what? What's, what's going on? That, that sounds like Aggie. Auntie Swift! Anti Swift! Aggie, you're as white as a sheet. It's McPherson the Ram. He tried to attack me. Did he say something very quietly and then go boo at the end? Yes, yes, that's it. Ah, he does that to all of us. He's just having a bit of fun. So he's not going to chase me with his great big curly horns? <laughs> no, Aggie, he's not. Now, off with you. Have a long walk and calm down. The fresh air will do you good. As usual, Swift was right, and the walk along the cliffs made Aggie feel much calmer. But then, something caught his eye in the water. Surely he was imagining it. But no, there it was again. Something grey, just below the surface. Ah, shark! Sh shark! 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 No, no, no! Spend the seal! What the cowardly lamb? Auntie Swift! I saw a shark in the sea. It'll jump up and bite my bottom. I know it. A shark, you say? What does he look like? Grey and, and wet and, well, a bit blubbery. Did I hear someone say blubber? That'll be my mate Svender Seal. And Svender Seal is not a shark. Svender Seal's a seal, you daft cotton bud. Oh. So he's not going to bite me then? No, Aggie. Your bottom is quite safe. I think you'd better sleep close to the farm tonight if you're going to be so nervous. But Aggie was still frightened when it came to bedtime. Oh, I don't like it round here. It's even worse than on the cliffs. What was that? <gasps> it's just a dog, Aggie. It's just a dog. It, 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 just a dog. It's a wolf. 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 There's a 
the wolf in the yard. Oh, Aggie, how many more times with these ridiculous stories? But it was a wolf. Do I really look like a wolf? Cool. Oh, it was you, Eddie. You've gone too far this time, Aggie. Just leave me to my sleep, go back to the flock and stop bothering everyone. Silly lamb. Oh, I'm sorry, Auntie Swift. I'll just go for a wonder by myself then. Keep myself to myself. The following morning, Aggie wandered along the cliffs, all alone, apart from the birds. At least they weren't frightening, thought Aggie. Except, what was that? Soaring behind him. It wasn't a seagull, or even a kestrel. It was too big for that. Rich brown feathers, yellow hooded eyes, a fearsome hooked beak, and talons strong enough to carry a lamb. Oh, that's a grand old bird up there. Looks like a, an eagle. A golden eagle? Oh, a golden eagle! Eagle, 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 Eddie, run for your life! There's a golden eagle! Yeah, right. And I'm a giraffe. <laughs> giraffe! Nice one, Sam! Oh, Jake, take cover. There's a golden eagle on Mort Point. <laughs> and I'm a killer whale. Got any more jokes? Oh, it's not a joke. Oh, uh, Auntie Swift, you've got to believe me. There's an enormous golden eagle on the cliffs. Of course there is. And I'm a rhinoceros. But it was... A very angry rhinoceros who's had enough of your fibs. Now shoo, Aggie. Shoo! Aggie returned nervously to the cliffs determined to prove he was telling the truth. Oh, and there's Mist. I suppose she's come to tell me to stop fibbing too. Aggie! Aggie! I didn't make it up. There was an eagle here. I know, I know! Look up! There! Yes, I told you! Eagle, eagle, eagle! Eagle, eagle, eagle! Aggie, Aggie, stay very still. But he's getting closer! It's time to be brave, Aggie. The more we panic, the more we'll look like prey. What does that mean? It means he'll think we're food. Food? Oh, no, here he comes. Uh, uh, please, sir. Please, sir, don't eat me. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm not very tasty. I I'm all wool and gristle. I am not going to eat you. You're not going to eat us? Correct. I am not hungry. But I am lost. Okay, um... Where do you live? What if I knew that I wouldn't be lost? Uh, yes, yes, of, of course. Um, how did you come to be lost? <sighs> it has been such a cold, cold summer where I'm from. So I kept flying down towards warmer weather. And now, I cannot find my way back. Back to my family. What does your home look like? My eyrie is in the side of a high mountain with snow on its cap and heather at its base, surrounded by deep, dark locks. The Highlands. Well, what did the little lamb say? It's the Scottish Highlands. I've heard Mr. McPherson talk about it. Then you must take me to this McPherson. Oh, no, 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 no. He's the grumpiest ram in the world. Aggie, if you're brave enough to talk to a golden eagle, I'm sure you can face McPherson. <laughs> the dog is right. Eat the way, lamb. Ah! And so it was that the lamb led the dog and the eagle to the ram. Uh, what was that? Uh, is it me or is that a golden eagle? If we stay very, very still, he won't see us. Are all rams as stupid as you? Well done, Mr. Eagle. You found him. Aggie, what are you doing, you fool? Run! It's all right, Mr. Uncle Max, sir. He needs help. What are you talking about, boy? He'll have us for supper. The brave lamb is right. I need help. Help to get home. Home, you say? Oh, never heard of it. Can't help you. Why? But he lives in the Scottish Highlands. Scotland? Scotland? 
Well, why didn't you say? Oh, Scotland, proud and brave. Oh, my land, my home, but the memory. I'm in rather a hurry. Oh, right, of course. Um, well, we're in the south now. Not our choice, mind. And Scotland's in the north, and that there is the sea. That's north. Fly over the sea, over the valleys of Weir, and then turn right in the Lake District, fly up a bit more. And sure enough, you'll soon see the highlands of Scotland and your home. Uh, thank you, Rams. And thank you, Aggie. Oh, that's quite all right. You're the only lamb I've ever known not to run away from me. Farewell, brave lamb. The eagle soared effortlessly away over the sea towards his home. It's just taken off, look! Gee, Mac! Oh, a real live golden eagle in Devon! How unlikely! What are you looking at, Auntie Swift? An eagle, Aggie! A golden eagle! What are you talking about, Auntie Swift? I didn't see an eagle. Did you, miss? No, you must be seeing things, Swift. But it was. It was just there, as plain as the orange on my face. No, no, that wasn't an eagle. It was just a buzzard. A kestrel. A sparrow, up close. Really, Auntie Swift, you must stop making up stories like this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yes, all right. Very funny, Aggie. Good one, Aggie. Good one. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Mac. And we'll be here again to see Miss Dawn Windcutter die.